Hello, gamers. The, uh, the, the blizzard... It's not really a blizzard anymore. It's just really icy. The, the ice saga took a, a new turn last night. You may recall, Tuesday, sledded my daughter to daycare in the morning. On the way back, she said, I don't like the sled. So I carried her, I carried the sled, I carried a, a bag with some candy canes in it that the daycare gave us all the way home. Got there, my arms were, were dying, okay? Yesterday morning, drive her to daycare instead, because I say I'm not, I'm not falling for that one again. Uh, everything went fine, except there was, uh, you know, it's icy, so you're kind of sliding around a little bit, but there was almost no traffic, so it ended up being okay. Pick her up in the car. As soon as I got my car, you know, skidded into the parallel parking spot, traffic jammed up around me. Uh, I, I picked up my daughter from the daycare, and the car that was in front of me when I parked was in exactly the same spot when I came out. So I basically said, fuck that. <laughs> I am not getting in the car, pulling out of this parking spot just to sit in the road and move six inches ahead every 10 minutes. So I walked her home, abandoned the car in its parking spot, had a little family time, ate dinner. Two, three hours later, walked back, no traffic, got the car, drove it home. This morning, drove her. I think we finally found the Goldilocks zone. I'm going to drive her in the morning, which was fine this morning again because there was almost no traffic. And then at 4.30, 5 p.m. when the traffic gets crazy and... Uh, it's, uh, you know, nobody's moving. I'm just going to walk to the daycare and then I'm going to carry your ass home. <laughs> I thought your tweet was a joke. It's not a joke. This is my life. Also, when I, when I was walking my daughter home, every intersection was like two cars just look, staring at each other and their wheels spinning, not moving at all. It's like a 20-minute walk. I saw... A handful of cars drift a little bit. I saw at least half a dozen cars that were just stuck at intersections, incapable of moving, including an ambulance that was just stuck in the middle of the road. And I saw a minor fender bender. That's a 15, 20 minute walk. No big deal. Yeah, I get it. You live in the Yukon. Okay, congratulations. You want, you want to be Yukon posting? Why don't you go to your local grocery store and tell me how much a quart of orange juice costs? You think $8 orange juice is bad? Try living in the Yukon where it all comes in on a float plane and we pay $22 for Tropicana. Okay, you know, I get it. It sucks. It sucks here too, you know? Why, why, do, why don't we use that as an opportunity for bonding instead of an opportunity to, to draw uh, delineations between us? And then apparently, let me see um, if I can find the tweet. Okay, so we're supposed to drive on um, Saturday... Apparently on Friday morning to Saturday morning, here's what's coming our way. Let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can find it here. Alerts for Metro Vancouver, a significant winter storm will bring wintry conditions to the south coast. Time span, Thursday night to Saturday. Hazards, heavy snow followed by freezing rain and rain. Okay, just give it a moment here. And then the top post... The lead forecaster for the BC Wildfire Service is emphasizing how this is going to be much worse than the forecast right now. In my 20 years of forecasting, I've never been so concerned about a weather forecast. The weather pattern setting up over the south coast Thursday night through Saturday is a textbook prolonged freezing rain event and will have major impacts. Following our Arctic outflow pattern, road weather information sensors are reporting road surface temperatures near minus 15 C, i.e. Road, roads are frozen rock solid. As a major coastal valley, the Fraser Valley holds on to Arctic air longer than most. Weather models have a well-documented weakness, blah, 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 meteorologist, circle jerk, etc., etc., this incoming Category 2 slash 3 atmospheric river will deliver 50 to 80 millimeters of rain, skyrocketing freezing levels to 2,000 plus meters over the south coast. The rain falling into the ice box that is the Fraser Valley will freeze on immediate contact with the roads, bridges, power line structures, and create an instantaneous coating of sheer ice. 36 plus hours of freezing rain equals very bad. So I don't know what we're going to do... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to be very um, zen about it. You know, I think on Tuesday I was stressed. That's how I ended up pinching my thumb into the back door. Then, you know, I, I was walking uh, 
walking her to daycare and I was like, how much worse could it get? Then I drove to daycare, walked her back and had to walk back to my car and then drive back from daycare. Now I'm like, bring it on, God. Bring it on. Maybe, the, maybe there's a realistic chance that we don't uh, go to family Christmas 300 kilometers away. And instead, we just uh, have a little Christmas at home. And maybe we, we see our family on like December 28th or something like that. That wouldn't, that wouldn't bother me too much. Sounds better than... You know what's crazy is that I have to hand it to Washington State. No disrespect. As, if, if you can make it to the Washington State border, you're going to be fine. Apparently, the, and the, this is not meant as a joke, apparently it's legitimate that the U.S. military considers the highway system part of national defense. So when you're in the winter and you're driving in Washington, you're like, this isn't bad at all. Literally like one millimeter past the border, they say like, you know, welcome home, sir. And then you're, you're on an ice rink going. It's crazy. Eisenhower, baby. <laughs> Those aren't guns. That's your tires slipping and grabbing and slipping and grabbing. I'm stuck at YVR. What do I do here? Honestly, like, and you have my sympathy. I'm just saying, like, I think all you can really do it's, um, is have a sense of humor. I've heard that the air... Apathy dog? Is the, the next stage in Apollo's evolution? Yeah, I think you just got to have a sense of humor. You might be... I don't know. Apparently, like... YVR is fucked. Like, there was the day they, um, they canceled all the flights. So now they're working through the backlog. But they also are just like, if you were part of the backlog, you might be fucked because we got to get all the people who normally had flights on, like, the 22nd and the 21st out. So I, I think, honestly, you should just embrace the fact, and, and it's easier said than done. I think you should embrace the fact that you're in planes, trains, and automobiles, essentially. And, uh, and just remember, like, cultivate the idea that this is going to make for a great story someday. Also, what, what terminal are you in? Are you in Canada to Canada? Are you in the domestic terminal? Or are you in the, the U.S. terminal? If you're in the U.S. terminal, you, you have my sympathy. Because there's literally, like, two restaurants that are not Tim Hortons. And uh, one of them is the Canucks-themed restaurant, which is just, like... Of all the themes you could possibly have. And they, the menu is not even like Canucks. It's not like the Henrik Sedin salad or anything like that. It's literally just like bacon and eggs. But then you're like sitting next to a photo of Kevin Bieksa.